You've got to realize you're being criticized against the fashion of the day. And when the fashion changes, everybody forgets about that. Being a director is being a watcher. You have a lot of egos in the room, and you have to sort of watch how they interact with each other. There was Marty and I, then there was George and Francis and Stephen. What we did in our generation will never be duplicated. Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. I'm Matt Achety, Ben Mankiewicz, Alonzo Duraldi, and, of course, Christy Lemire. We are here to talk about De Palma, uh, a film directed by Noah... Baumbach. Bomba? Bomba. And <laughs> Jake Paltrow. Jake Paltrow. Jake Paltrow. Uh, ben, are you going to describe it? Yeah, so uh, this is a really sort of straightforward uh, documentary, but a really... <laughs> <laughs> now it's creepy. Uh, now it's just straight up creepy. Uh, <laughs> especially because we're talking about De Palma. Uh, but a really... Uh, <laughs> we're, we're doing, it's, doing a split it's a, screen. It's, it's, like simple, a split screen. Uh, it's yeah. simple but good. I think they, I think they shot for a day <laughs> because they cover... Pretty every significant movie uh, in Brian De Palma's career, and it's just Brian De Palma talking about these movies. And as we'll tell you momentarily, these are some moderately seminal movies of the <laughs> of the '70s uh, and into the '80s. And and De Palma has had a connection and an interesting link to some really important filmmakers. And I think, as 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 Paltrow and Baumbach clearly believe, he himself is an important filmmaker, spanning from. Sisters, which everybody wants to talk about with Margot Kidder, uh, uh, straight through to what I had completely forgotten until I saw it, that he did the first Mission Impossible. Um, so uh, uh, I think it is uh, worth seeing, and here is a short clip. My movies tend to upset people a lot, so you can imagine the things they're trying to take out of my movies. I did grow up in an operating room. I saw a lot of blood. I had been battling with the ratings board and it kept on getting X's, and then I said, absolutely, I'm not changing it anymore. And what I did that really drove the mold crazy is that I put everything back in. It's all X to me. When you do some of these things, they make perfect logical sense to you, and then you put them in front of an audience, they go, holy cow. Yeah, I think whether or not you are a, a fan of Brian De Palma. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a gigantic Brian De Palma fan, but I, I walked away as more of one, yeah, seeing definitely. the breadth okay. of his career and the arc of it, and and hearing just hearing him talk about movies. Like, it's, it's this great little mini film school for yeah. an hour and oh, yeah, 45 yeah. minutes, and you learn so much, or your ideas are reinforced so much about how movies get made or to how freaking hard it is to get a movie made and just perception and just work. And he says one great thing in it, like contrary to popular belief, directors don't have this great path planned right, out. No, you no know, plan, right. you make a movie and then you make another movie <laughs> and then you try to make a movie and it's just, it's fascinating. I could listen to him talk for like three hours. Oh yeah, no, that movie, this movie could have been another hour longer. And you're right, the, the actual shooting probably took a day because it's, it's just the same He's static shot. Same shirt. Same outfit, De Palma yeah. in the same outfit in the same chair. But the editing I'm sure took months right. because they bring in clips of the films that he made and then the films that, that influence him. I think the first thing you see in this movie is a clip from Vertigo, yeah. go figure. Um, and yeah, I'm very hot and cold with De Palma, but for example, uh, Bonfire of the Vanities, a movie that does not work, but hearing him talk about it's why it doesn't work, riveting. He's yeah. very knowledgeable about why it does not work. He's totally, very yeah, candid he's, about yeah. it. He, he's honest. Um, uh, you know, he sees himself. He starts Vertigo as the sort of this makes this is going to make him sound like an ass, and he doesn't. But he <laughs> sees himself as as the successor to Hitchcock. Not so much in that he's as good as Hitchcock, but that he thinks that what Hitchcock did, he was like, no, that's great. I'm going to try to emulate that, and I don't know why everyone isn't trying mm -hmm. to emulate that. Um, and he said it really about Bonfire of the Vanities. Again, one of the many interesting things come out. He's like, look, at the end, when it's all over, he explains he's honest about why it doesn't work, and then he says, look, I think now it sort of holds up. It stands on its own as long as you don't read the book. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you, that's the problem is that everybody read right, the book. Everybody read the book. It was it. right, and 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 it did not meet those expectations. Uh, and then he's honest about so many actors. You know, I mean, Cliff Robertson. 
takes a, oh, what a <laughs> dick. Roberts takes a beating in this movie. Uh, what was that for obsession? Yeah, for, for he, like he was so worried that Genevieve Bujold was stealing the movie that he would screw with her eye lines by yes. doing his dialogue in the in the wrong place like and give just, and feed give her, her lines. Energy. You know, one of the things that. Uh, Faye Dunaway learned from Anthony Quinn, and she told me uh, uh, when we did this long, that one of the best things that Faye talked about in the long TCM interview we did was that it was the, she was really good on the craft of acting. And, and that the most important thing you can do is, the, is, is how you feed the other actors' lives, how you act when you're not, when the camera's not on you. And, and so to have her had to tell me that recently, right, and how important that is for serious actors, and De Palma says that Cliff Robertson was like, yeah, that's because I love you, and I always, uh, I always loved you. You know, yeah. he's, like, he's, like, he's like deliberately giving her absolutely nothing to work with just because he doesn't want her to steal the movie. It's so petty, and, and I think when we think of, of like De Palma as as a brand, so to speak, mm -hmm. let me think of, of lurid, big, splashy filmmaking, big emotions, big action set pieces, and I came to really appreciate the care he takes with camera work, right? In yeah. the tradition of Hitchcock, yes, like right, you know, right. long tracking shots and really, really being careful, like and they showed in, in Carrie especially, mm. the, lo the long shot going up to the rafters in the prom and over the top <clears throat> of the bucket full of the blood and how long it took to get that shot right, like an en entire day just to get that one shot right and then the camera like looks down onto them at their table at the, at the prom. So I really came to appreciate the craftsmanship and the care and how obsessive he is with creating a, an artful moment. Maybe we think of like, you know, the big Scarface moment, sure. or, you know, the, the, the big splashy stuff, but like the tiny stuff he really, really cares yeah. about, quite obviously. E even in a movie that doesn't work, like Snake Eyes, which I think is kind right. of a hot that mess, opening that shot. opening shot of the hotel yeah. rooms in Las Vegas is, you know. But like Snake stage. Eyes, he's really great about why Snake Eyes, the ending didn't work, you yes. know, and, uh, uh, but then just the little stories that, that he provides on Scarface, so Pacino, Oh, Burned, yeah. Burned his hand Burned off his by hand. picking up a gun by the barrel. So for two weeks, Pacino's unavailable, and he's still got to shoot. So that's why you have guys shooting from eight million different directions, because <laughs> he had two weeks had to, to do kill, something. so he just <laughs> kept shooting guys shooting, you know? And then the talk about how Sissy Spacek got Carrie. Yeah. That, you know, he too. basically told her to go take a commercial, and she's like, no, I'll audition. He was like, all right, but I'm going to choose. Who was he going to pick? I can't remember. Somebody interesting. I uh, forget. And then, and then, and then she auditions, and he's like, and then we all, everyone was like, oh, nope, this <laughs> yeah, is it. So it's it really sense. right. Uh, uh, but that's like a nice. Those are both nice moments from movies that mean a lot to people. I, I would love for Bombach and Paltrow to do this movie yes. about all of De Palma's sort of like right. Hollywood Young Turk peers. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to see the Coppola one and the Lucas one and the Spielberg one and the Scorsese one if they could all be as candid as De Palma right. is and as sort of self-reflective. Like Paul Schrader would be great at mm -hmm. this kind of movie because mm -hmm. he is a film critic who became a filmmaker and I think has a really great way of talking about his own work that way, and I would, I would love this. This, this should be a series of movies about directors yeah. because he, it's so illuminating, so, so interesting. Much. He's his respect for writers comes through very clearly. Like you know, the moment when he had to fire his friend for a while, that he was like a couple moments where he didn't make movies because they fired the writer, and he feels like you should go down with the writer. Um, David Cap. David, I think right. that was David right. Kep. And, they, and they wanted to bring Robert Town on. And, they were, and they did bring Robert yeah. Town on. Oh, and then Town and Kep are in different hotels. Yeah. Right? <laughs> working on dueling screenplays for uh, for Mission Impossible, right? <laughs> there's just really, there's really good stuff like that sort of consistently throughout this movie. And 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 he may fashion himself a little bit more of a renegade than, 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 than at least the, uh, the perception that I have of him is. But again, you leave it, no matter what you think of De Palma, uh, you leave it liking him more. If you love him, you'll like him more, and if you don't like him, you'll like him. Yeah, uh, and, and part of that too is he, he's, he's very honest about the filmmaking process, but also honest about how his own personal life seeped yeah. into the kinds of work he did, mm -hmm. and the, how, how that dictated the highs and lows, and so that also humanizes him in, in a great deal, it makes us care about him and respond to him more. He, he's really truthful. One of, he's, I think he said three movies just, he's like, they just work, it doesn't happen almost ever, that mm -hmm. you just start, and it goes well, and it finishes, and the movie's good, uh, like uh, Dress to Kill, uh, Carlito's Way, uh, he thought he didn't. He was disappointed at the how Carlito's Way mm -hmm. did because he's watching it. He goes, I can't do better than this. Like, <laughs> I, like, like you know, he's like, I don't know why don't people love this. This is this is as good as I can get. Uh, the only thing is, is that while it was great to see the praise for uh, Dress to Kill, uh, not enough uh, Angie Dickinson talk.
of the only I wanted. Uh, I wanted more about Andy. Yeah, and it's worth noting nobody movie? else is I interviewed in this movie. Right, it's just, yeah, it's just him. This is not like a documentary right. where they would bring in all the people that are working. It's, it's just a Palma talk. And that's not boring at all. No, like, that's riveting the no, whole no, time. No. Also, I totally forgot that he did Phantom of the Paradise. Oh like, yeah. Speaking uh, of movies that he made that like weren't appreciated at all in their time. <laughs> I mean, that's a total film geek. Culture. No, uh, <clears> my, my my friend Malcolm Ingram was making a documentary about why that movie was a giant hit in Winnipeg and nowhere else. It's so weird. When I covered Harry Knowles' first button on a thon in 1999 at, at the old Alamo Draft House and they showed Fam of the Paradise and I had never even heard of it. And the whole room was like, oh my God, Fam of the Paradise because they're all serious film geeks. And this movie matters to them. And It's great. Yeah, it's I, I, I wanted more talk about Femme Fatale. That's oh, a movie yeah, totally that I love yeah. that people don't talk about. Um, he, uh, uh, you, uh, unquestionably, you come out of it and you think the first free moment you have, you're going to spend one weekend and watch five, Everything. five <laughs> Palmer movies. Yeah, so where's your number then? I think I gave it an eight and a half. Yeah. yeah. You want to stick with that? I do. Okay. I'm saying nine. Nine and a half. I, I had a great time. No. You're saying nine and a half, really? Didn't I? You I said nine. Now. Okay, I said nine. Fine. <laughs> I, I hate being locked into what I said to Metacritic last August. Fine. A nine. Okay, so it's 8.8. .8. This movie is really good. Really oh, you didn't say it. I'll just give it a nine. Let's give it a nine. Nines, nines, nines. Nine. Make it a nine. It's a nine. <laughs> uh, it is at 98% okay. on the tomato meter. Hopefully it will come to you. Yeah, it's Hopefully really good. It. It's really worth seeing. It Seek moves it super quickly.